in Chahbahar. He alleges Jadav crossed over from Iran to Baluchistan, and the document alleges he is a commander in the Indian Navy. He concludes, he concludes by making serious allegations against India of state-sponsored terrorism and of repeating its efforts of 1971 in Baluchistan. You will be surprised to find, despite all this, towards the end of their mem counter memorial, one of the defenses is that India has not established his nationality. There is no manner of doubt that Pakistan <clears throat> was using this as a propaganda tool. Pakistan was bound to grant consular access without delay. India's request for access did not evoke any response. In para 9 of its memorial, India asserts that Pakistan's conduct suggests that even Jadav was not informed of his right to consular access. And this is not contradicted in the Dante Memorial. On 30th March 16, India reminded Pakistan of its request for consular access and received no reply to its communication. Thirteen reminders were sent by India on various dates, and I will deal with them in my narrative. Pakistan acknowledges that as early as 30 March 2016, the Indian High Commission in Islamabad sent a note verbal to Pakistan's Minister of Foreign Affairs requesting consular access. Pakistan obviously had no difficulty in recognizing that the request related to Jadav. India has no papers or authentic information of what happened in Pakistan. The information in public domain in relation to Jadav's alleged arrest and trial was first found in the statement of Mr. Sartarzis made on 14th April 2017. The public announcement by the... All right, we'll try to get you the latest reactions on uh, what uh, this uh, argument that India has presented at the International Court of Justice really means and uh, what can we expect now that Pakistan is all set to uh, reply. Uh, that will, also, of course, not be today, uh, as we understand. Uh, and we'll come back to you with more details on that. But let's just move on to the other big story that we're tracking, and this is about what has... ...to the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations to the effect that the treaty is intended to strike a balance among state or accurate. This does require that the treaty be dismissed outright as one that may concern the protection of an individual's fundamental rights in the American hemisphere. Going into this question, sir, the court has, holds, and I again quote, provision concerning recogni <clears throat> recognizing consular communication serves a dual purpose. That of recognizing a state's right to assist its nationals through the consular officer's actions and correspondingly that of the recognizing the correlative right of the national of the sending state to contact the consular officer to obtain that assistance. Unquote. In paragraph 82 of the judgment, it notes that the bearer of the rights mentioned in the preceding paragraph, which the international community has recognized in the body of principles for the protection of all persons under any form of detention of him or imprisonment, is the individual. In effect, this article is unequivocal in stating that the right to counsel or information and notification are accorded to the interested person. In this respect, Article 36 is a notable exception to what are essentially states' rights and obligations accorded elsewhere in the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations. As interpreted by this court in the advisory opinion, Article 36 is a notable advance over international law's traditional 